Hey, Homestead Prepper. Okay, uh, I'm upgrading my uh, Faraday cage and how I'm protecting my electronics. So my last video, I appreciate all the comments that everybody left. I did have one comment, and a guy said he didn't think it would work. And guys, I want to tell you that you know what I'm doing, it may not work. Um, you know, without uh, you know some sophisticated test equipment, and when you start you know doing a little research into EMPs and you find out that you can have, uh, you know, a nuclear generated EMP can, you know, throw out about 50,000 volts per meter and that translates into about 6.6 .6 million watts of energy per square meter. Now that's, that's, uh, that's quite a bit of energy to go in a little area like that. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the magnetic component can go right through, uh, you know, materials. Uh, now I know I, I'm going to be. Th this is my uh, uh, Geiger counter radiation detector, and I've had this for some time. And uh, I, if you're going to store anything, you want to make sure you take the batteries out of it. But uh, I'm going to be boxing that up and giving it a couple layers of aluminum foil. Now I know there's going to be some engineers, electrical engineers, chime in and say that you know it needs to be copper foil. Copper is better. Well, yes, copper is a better conductor than aluminum. You know, but if you really want to do it right, you want to get some nice thick silver foil, and uh, that that is the best conductor of electricity, bar none. So, but uh, the problem is when silver tarnishes, it uh, it uh, it doesn't protect against the higher frequencies of uh, of an EMP. Also, some people you know say that you know you could put your stuff in a microwave, and and that's great as long as you know you're only going to get the high frequency components, you know, in the gigahertz range. So I know some of you probably don't understand what I'm talking about, but uh, just, just to make it simple, um, you, you need to take every precaution that you can. Uh, you know, I mean, I could spend thousands of dollars trying to protect this, but uh, I'm going to do it on the cheap. So let's, uh, let's just get started, and we're just going to box this up. And what you have to have is you have to have an insulative layer. So this, this paper cardboard makes a nice insulative layer. I've got some heavy-duty foil that I stole from my wife. No, I actually, actually said I could have it if I bought her some new stuff. So we're going to put this here. And we'll get this wrapped up. I like wrapping Christmas gifts. So we're doing a really professional job of this here. There we go. Let's get that wrapped. out to somebody. You, you, you guys can see now why my wife wraps all of our Christmas gifts. She doesn't like my wrap job, so which is fine. Now we can tape that. I've got some, you know, full tape here. Uh, I think as long as it's connected. Maybe when I get to the last layer I'll tape it up. But I've got some uh, newspaper here. We can wrap this up too. And what we're going to shoot for, guys, is uh, three wraps. And this this is just to insulate this from the next layer of foil that we're going to be using. So, can that up like that. Like I said, guys, I'm not a professional wrapper, and I really don't care as long as it blocks out the EMP effect. So, we can take a piece of tape here. Try and edit some of this out so it's not so boring for you guys. And I, guess I could have cut it with scissors and I, I could have made a you know a really nice uh, production. I might even put a bow on it. No, I don't know. Probably not going to do that though. Okay, so we've got that and then uh, we're going to wrap it up again with another layer. I don't know if that will cover it or not. It's not going to cover it. It's a good thing she gave me some more of this stuff. Okay guys, I'm going to get this wrapped up. And like I said, what you just saw here is you want to insulate it. And then you want to put uh, foil on it. And then you want to put another insulate. I'm going to shoot for ultimately three layers of this. Alright, well let's uh, let's get that wrapped up. Okay, and we'll use a little of this uh, this is just uh, fast tape. It's what I use for air conditioning. 
ductwork, ceiling, stuff like that. You could pick it up anywhere. Virtually anywhere. It's not going to be at the grocery store. I'm going to put that on there. And this is metal too, so... Okay, well there we go. And that has three layers of foil on it. Now I guess if you, you know, really wanted to you know, do it upright, you could put more and use thicker stuff. But um, I, I, this is going to suffice, and then I'm going to be uh, making some modifications to my uh, Faraday cage drum. So, uh, another thing I'm going to do, guys, is this. Now, you can throw this in your, you know, your Faraday cage, but this is conductive, so if you line the inside of your Faraday cage, you know, with something non-conductive like I've done with uh, uh, cardboard I think you'll be okay but if this is going to touch other items I, I don't want them to touch so I want them to be to completely isolated so what I'm doing I'm just going to put it in this little bag right here this is a one gallon freezer bag so I'm going to stick to that if it doesn't want to fit in there all right well that that um, plastic I'm sure it gives absolutely no protection but also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write on here what this is because you know I get a bunch of items in there I'm gonna go wow you know I'm not really sure what that is and I'd hate to open up the wrong thing okay so this is my uh, I, need, I need to get a marker all I got is a pen right there but uh, that's in case of uh, you know, nuclear attack but, okay guys, I just want to show that to you, so let me show you the uh, modifications on the uh, Faraday cage I'm making. Okay, we have to ask ourselves a question, do we ground or do we not ground? So, I've got two ground rods here, and that's because, uh, you know, I have electric on my uh, shipping container here. And I have uh, it, the container itself, the frame, bonded these two ground rods right there so uh, so this this container acts as a uh, huge Faraday cage and it is grounded now I've heard conjecture on whether a Faraday cage should be grounded or not grounded and according to my research and anyone out there who's in this field and has that expensive test equipment uh, you can answer if it's better to ground it or not ground it but According to my research, if you have penetrations, okay, like this container does, have some penetrations here and there, it's uh, it's better to ground it. And if you don't have any penetrations, they say it's not better to ground a Faraday cage for an EM, EMP. Uh, their reasoning is the the wire acts as an antenna, you know. So um, anyway, guys, you can see how I, you know, this is grounded. That's that's uh, grease around there, so it doesn't corrode. Um, this is how it is. I just drilled a quarter inch hole right through that and I scraped the paint off so I'd have some good conductivity and this is just a lug and I mean that's probably a piece of um, number six solid. You could probably use a piece of number ten solid or number eight solid would work great um, for for this application depending on you know what size service you have. If you have a 200 amp service on your shipping container then you're going to need a size four wire. So I would do it to code, but um, this is basically, it's just bolts on there, and that's a galvanized bolt, and you can't use a self-tapping screw, guys, that's going to lose conductivity. Now, if I were to um, ground my Faraday cage, uh, this is how I'd do it. Okay, guys, I just want to show you, if you are going to ground your Faraday cage, which, like I said, the, um, the, the jury is still out on that. What I would do on this type of container, I mean, you could drill a hole through here and bolt it, you know, like that, but then you're making a perforation in that, and I think you're just asking for trouble. But this, this particular um, barrel has a rim on it right here, and what you could do, and this, this is a, um, just a lug, you can get this up at Home Depot, it's good for number 6 to 14 wire, and you could put that on there like that, and 
you could get a quarter inch drill bit and we could just drill a hole right through there like that and bolt that thing on. Of course you want to clean the paint off and put some type of dielectric grease on there. But um, anyway, that, that's how I, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to, you know, damage the uh, the integrity of this because this is metal and that's metal there and that that's going to leave a gap and that that might cause me problems. So, okay, guys, uh, I'd love to hear your comments on whether it should be grounded or not grounded. I've seen uh, I've seen it done both ways. I saw somebody did a video and they're using uh, chicken wire as their uh, Faraday cage, but the frequencies that they're dealing with, um, the, the amplitude of the wave is smaller than the holes on their chicken wire. So uh, I would not use wire mesh. I would use something solid. That, that's just, you know, of course, my opinion, guys. Like I said, I'd love to hear your input. I wanted to add that uh, someone mentioned that there should uh, this should be uh, metal to metal right there on that edge. Um, you know, there again, guys, I don't know if that, you know, benefits it or not. I would imagine it probably would until the metal starts corroding. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap the edge of this with this metal foil tape. And I'll put a nice wrap, maybe two wraps on there. And then that should keep any transient um, uh, frequencies out of there, hopefully, out of those edges. Because these edges will leak no matter how tight I put them on there. But that, that metal tape is going to seal that up. So I just wanted to add that in there. All right, I'm trying to do this with uh, one hand here, but basically something like that. And then what I'm going to want to do is smooth this down. Anyway, you get the idea. And then just kind of press that in there. I might want to do this. Uh, at least twice. Okay, I got that uh, on there. I need to get a squeegee and really do that properly. And like I said, I'm going to be putting another another thing around there. Okay, homestead prep route.